tree sprays, traffic lane spotters. How do you apply them and what's their purpose? The single biggest cause of resoiling is the improper use of tree spray. Many people way overuse the tree spray. They put it down where it's not even needed. And then they forget a minor detail. If you put a bunch of tree spray into the carpet, you've got to get back out. And that's the reality. If you leave it down in there, it's gonna, you're going to leave a lot of residue. The carpet's going to resoil. So it's very important to use it judiciously and to thoroughly extract it back out if you're using it. If you've never cleaned carpet before, it's very hard to tell if you're getting it all back out. I can tell real easy. You can tell because, as Kevin mentioned, the sound. You're used to a certain sound of that air coming through the slot. And if you've ever extraction cleaned an area and all of a sudden that sound dramatically changes as you're passing over an area and then it goes back to its norm, what's happening is that area, there's something real foamy in there and the air velocity is just dropped like a rock because it's full of foam. Usually when you see that, you better take a quick note of that because if there's lots of foam in there, that's going to attract soil. That means something got spilled there, so what's going to happen possibly? I'm going to, I, I may have a quick a coke spill or something like that come back up that was not visible when I cleaned. So I need to pay particular attention to that. But let's say I put pre-spray down into this area because it was heavily trafficked and I cleaned. How will I know whether I've gotten it all back out or not? Because that's important. How I can know is with what they call a consumer demo tube. So this device right here, all it is is a clear plastic tube with the appropriate fittings. We just simply slice the vacuum hose near where I'd normally be standing. What its purpose is in the catalog is to show the customer all the filth that's coming out of their carpet. But I like it if somebody isn't used to that sound and everything. If you make some passes and you still see all kinds of suds coming through, what's that tell you? I still got some in there. I need to take some more passes. So that helps a lot in that case. The device to use for spraying it down is this right here. It's called an injection sprayer. Some people call it a Hydroforce, which is a, a brand name. If that isn't on this jug, but this is extremely important. The jug must be labeled with whatever's in there. That's required by law. It's required by DOT. It's required by OSHA. Every single thing in your van must be labeled. There's a chemical in it. I'm deliberately using that no-no word. So be sure if that's preface in there, there better be a preface label. Action sprayer. How it works is kind of like those garden sprayers. There's a what's called a DEMA valve. It's a mixing chamber. There's a tube that goes down into the undiluted preface in here. When you pull the, this is attached to your solution hose. So you just de uh, detach your your cleaning tool, and you attach this to the solution hose. When you pull this trigger. This cleaning solution goes through here, and here sucks up preface, mixes it one to ten with water, and you spray it down onto the carpet. Nothing could be simpler. If I want to get the crew upset, crews upset with me, all I have to do is take this away and tell them from now on they have to use that stupid pump-up sprayer again. Now, I'd be crucified real quick. Uh, that, so the nice thing about that is the solution's coming out at what temperature? My preface. <coughs> Yeah, it's coming out nice and hot to it, so it's going to be more effective. That's the easy and the best way to use it. The big things on, on with preface, it does not contain butyl salicylate. I'm mentioning that because, as I recall, there's a question on the test about that. Butyl salicylate is one of the most common ingredients in pre-sprays, commercial grade, window cleaners, wax strippers, and so forth. Great solvent. Weak formulating chemists absolutely love the stuff. It makes life easy. Only problem is it absorbs through the skin and reaches your kidneys and liver and causes long-term damage. We don't use it. The dead customer doesn't buy anything from us. That's a real. That's the reality. I don't want. Don't want you. To, I want you to live long and clean long and spend a lot of money. That sounds selfish, but that's you know. The, we, everybody else uses butyl salicylate. We do not. It's diluted 1 to 10 with water, at which point it has a pH a little under 10. 
the, the stain master has an upper pH limit of 10. So when we're doing residential work, we have to be below that pH of 10. So that's the reason for that. But what if we're doing commercial work? Well, that's real easy. Let's say I have PCA5 in my tank. I don't want to put in PCA4. TLS 2000 is used exactly the same way with pre as preface. In fact, it is preface plus a solvent, not butyl salicyl, and some silicate to raise the pH up to, what's, what's that pH? 12.5. 12.5 at mm -hmm. 1 to 10. That's extremely high. It's only commercial, not for residential work, not for what's called prints. What in the world is a print? When you watched that video, you saw them doing silk screening on carpet. You saw them having little uh, computerized sprays. How much dye gets onto that piece of carpet? Yeah, what you'll do, what you can, you can find it real easy. Usually prints are commercial and are real pretty designs. All you got to do is get down on your hands and knees and pull the fibers apart and you'll notice that the dye has only gone down about a third of the way. The rest of it is gray goods. Problem there is that that dye may not be all that stable, number one. Number two, it may dull on you if you use too high a pH of product. Obviously not for wolves. Obviously not for residential work. Can you visualize a baby crawling around on a carpet that has a pH of 12.5? No. Now, let, but that we, here, here's, a, here's a situation though. Let's say we have a really nasty, grungy apartment. We just thoroughly trashed. We can pre-spray TLS 2000 on it, scrub it in with a handy groom or a handy rake, do our normal cleaning. pH is too high, isn't it? Because how do you know that a baby isn't going to be in there the next tenant? How do we take care of How do we get the pH back down? It's real simple. We do what's called a brownout flush. I'll talk about brownout in a little bit, but that basically involves taking your base unit, water, a little bit of brown, I'll tell you the directions in a minute, and we just go over it as if we were cleaning, it flushes it all out and brings the pH back down. No big deal. Some people call it an acid rinse. Don't use that term. Prozyme. Prozyme is an enzyme bacteria mixture. Primarily for restaurants where you need an enzyme to go after. That's what even our own service company primarily uses. Two ounces per gallon in hot water. If you're going to use it in an injection sprayer, you can put in 12 ounces in that 5-quart injection sprayer with a little real hot water. One word of caution, though, if you do this. If you dissolve it in the jug and you start spraying it out, if not every single grain was dissolved, it will get caught in that mixing chamber. It will never come back out. I've done it. You can't unclog it. So if you're going to use the, the Prozyme, mix it up into a, an injection sprayer, run that solution through a filter first. What kind of filter would you have? Pantyhose or rag or anything, just something to catch. It may look like it's all dissolved. It's only going to take one single little piece of Prozyme to clog it. Olefin preconditioner is designed primarily for olefin. You have a really oily olefin carpet. This is, it wouldn't be for all olefin. This would be like that car showroom again, where somebody's put olefin exactly where it doesn't belong. That's what this product is for. You dilute it 1 to 30 with water. If you're going to use the injection sprayer, which only which dilutes 1 to 10, how do you get it down to 1 to 10? You dilute it 1 to 2 with water, put that into the jug, and now when it gets sprayed out, it comes out at 1 to 30. Mentioned a lot of pre-sprays, didn't I? Which one are you going to use 99% of the time? Preface. Occasionally you'll run into some olefin that's really greasy or some other carpet that's really oily, asphalt, track in, things like that. We can just simply take our pre-spray and add the product energy to it. It smells just like bug spray. It's a solvent with a little emulsifier. We can add that to our free spray and it makes it much better for oily. You like this carpet? Residential cut pile carpets. Your house look like that. 
Have you ever been in a house that looks like that? I have. What? Well, that's pretty extreme, isn't it? Does that require, would you use your normal cleaning for that? That's cut pile, but it's really nasty, isn't it? No, what we will do for pre-spray instead of our normal preface, we will use Dirt Chaser or Prozyme with some energy added to it. And we'll use our Formula 5, or if we can get away with it, we'll use Super LCA along with our booster. If we went to a too high a pH and it's residential, gotta do a run out flush. That's pretty extreme. How about commercial? You ever see a commercial carpet look like that? Why does it look like that? What do you see wrong with this carpet? Well, who was it was asking me about a carpet with this color? Notice that that's this color? What's, what's the problem? For the condition, was that the correct color? No. Poor choice. A mistake because it's apparently has you asked about asphalt tracking problem is here they have extreme I don't know where this is from extremely heavy soil getting tracked in here they would have been a lot better off with the carpet more along this line we would have hidden it better how are we going to clean that well we're going to have to use TLS 2000 maybe with a little energy added to it we're going to scrub it with a rotary floor machine I mean, this is extreme. We're going to clean, if possible, with PCA4 or Super LCA. And then if it's a situation where people might be walking around barefooted, then we may want to do a brown out for rinse. And then we've gone so far, we may want to go over it with some dry bonds. Would you charge 24 cents a square foot for this job? The reality is, if a carpet's getting got <coughs> into this kind of condition, what's that tell you about these people? It's going to happen again because they're cheap they're be and they think that it should only need, be needed once or twice a year. And they have a hundred thousand elephants walking through here every day. We don't like that kind of work, of course. And the problem with them, and we particularly don't like restaurants. We have some restaurants, but not very many. We hate restaurants because they put it off as long as humanly possible. The carpet is rock hard with grease. They want it done in the middle of the night. They're looking for the lowest bidder, and they want it on an open account, pay it in 90 days if you're lucky. Who needs that kind of business? And they want it to look like it's new. And they want it to look like it's new, and to stay that That's way for a year. Part about it. 